This is something that I discussed as well in the four by four. So I take here the example of UPS, uh, which is um, same as FedEx, as you know, so delivery. Um, and uh, pretty soon in the next 15 days, UPS is gonna come with its earnings. And I think when we look at, when we have a position or when we don't have a position, we are always interested to know and to try to guess by how much the stock is going to be moving on the day. Okay, so that's the implied volatility. So if you look at UPS, this is a United Parcel Service, which has roughly, that was a couple of days ago, 156 billion market cap. And the earnings are on the 27th of April uh, of, of this year. So I took the last at, uh, which was on the 30th of April, April of 178.75. And I try to identify the implied move that was expected around the earnings. So to do so, I look at the implied volatility for the at the money, meaning close to the last of the put and the call, which are expiring at the end of this month on the 30th of April, 2021. So if we look at the uh, at the money put and call at 177.5, so you have a 33% implied volatility. So here, if we look at 177.5 strike, and if you look at the call, which is here, and if you look at the implied volatility on the call and the put, you get 33%. So based on that, now we're gonna try to identify by how much the stock could be moving on the day. So what we will be using is we're gonna be using the bid ask of both the call and the put. So let's go into the next slide. To do so, we're gonna be looking at the weekly straddle. So what is a straddle? A, straddle? a long straddle is a neutral strategy when we buy a put option and a call option with the same maturity and the same strike price. So what we would like to, go, to have is the stock moving big. Most of the time for retail traders, and that's explained in the four by four, doing some straddle or strangle, um, the risk reward is pretty, pretty bad because it's gonna, you need a, a huge move uh, to, be making, uh, to, to be making money. So that's one of the strategies that is not really interesting most of the time, as always is most of the time. But I think at least what we can have from it is understanding by how much the stock is gonna be moving, could be moving on the day. So if we take the example above, uh, to cover the earnings, we, which are coming on the 27th of April, we're gonna be taking the next maturity, the, uh, the closest, which is on the 30th of April. And if we look at the 177.5 call, it was trading between the bid was at 5.65, offer at 5.9. So if you take the mid, that gives you $5.78. For the put, you have $4.53. So if you aggregate $5.78, the call plus $4.53 for the put, and you divide by the last, that's going to give you a 5.8%. So based on the earnings, that's right, based on the option chain, UPS is roughly expected to move by 5.8% on its earnings. So I think what is interesting here and what is important is if I, if I tell you UPS is moving by 5.8%, the first thing that you're gonna say, or you could say, is it big or is it small? Okay, so you're gonna start to be making a decision. What always helps when we look at implied volatility is to compare implied volatility with realized volatility. And what is realized volatility is most of the time what happened in the past. So what happened in the past, what I did for you is I look at the earnings of uh, UPS uh, for, the, uh, for the last 10 earnings and what, I, what was the move on the day based uh, on that day. So as we can see, move on the day, 4.5% on this uh, uh, during the, uh, so here, this is Q4 2020. We moved by 4.5%. Earnings before minus 4.5%. So what you're gonna be taking is the absolute percentage move on the day, and you end up with an average 5.2. So here you can see that you have an outlier, but outliers for stocks 
always happens or might happen. So that means, you know, you need to take, when you do those, those, uh, those average, you need to be taking enough data uh, to, uh, to mitigate those, 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 um, those outliers. And if we take the high versus the lows, uh, on the day, we had a 4.7%. So remember what we had before. Before we had a move of 5.8% implied move based on the uh, value chain, or the value chain, the option chain, and versus 5.2. So as always, what is interesting is implied volatility, 99% of the time is higher than realized volatility. Why? Because as market participants will be overpaying or paying more for the protection. But as well, you can see that implied volatility is not very far off from realized volatility. That tells you as well that, you know, sometimes you come with an idea of a stock and you say, oh, this stock is gonna be moving by 15%. And actually the market is going to be pricing 5% or 10%. So depending first where you think that the, by how much the stock is going to be moving and, and you know if the implied volatility is underpriced or overpriced. So that was the case uh, uh, previous quarter, I think it was previous quarter where Goose, uh, so Canada Goose was expected to be moving 10% and the stock moved up 20, 25%. And as well, for us, for the learning curve, it's pretty uh, uh, nice to understand, you know, roughly by how, how much a stock will be moving. So if you have position uh, coming into the earning, um, and I hope, you know, some of those are well hedged or most of them are well hedged, but at least you can be already, uh, you can already know by how much the stock uh, is uh, expected to move uh, by the market.